Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the Kaizen Spotlight, where we have these wonderful conversations with Kaizen champions. And joining me today is a, a true Kaizen champion, a, a person who has walked the talk and who has been driving some fantastic improvements in his organization, Patterson. So, a big warm welcome to you, Madhur. Hello, how are you doing? Good, good. Thank you, Jen. Nice to be here. Thank you very much. And it's absolute pleasure to have you on this conversation. And for the benefit of my viewers, I would like to formally introduce Madhur. Madhur is, a, uh, is, is the future of India, Indian manufacturing. He's uh, all of 28. He's the director for operations for his company, which was established by his uh, family, by his father about 40 years ago. And they're one of the global leaders in manufacturing uh, certain components that go into manufacturing of paper. And uh, <clears throat> this is, um, you know, equipments which are very important in digesting paper, pre-preparation. Am I correct, sir? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, paper manufacturing has different stages, but uh, one of the important stages is where you digest and you prepare the pulp, which then goes into drying and paper making. And uh, Madhur is, of course, a mechanical engineer, not difficult to guess because they are in um, very hardcore mechanical engineering as an organization. He also holds a master in business administration, both of which is from Phoenix, Arizona, a very um, interesting place in, in America. And uh, since he has come back from his formal qualifications, he's been uh, part of the operations team as a director for this company. Uh, driving the growth and they have expanded into uh, uh, acquiring a plant in uh, Sao Paulo, in uh, Brazil. And of course, their components and products are exported all over the world. How many countries would that be, Madhur? So that's 63 so far. 63 countries. So thank you again. And the first um, sort of reflection I would like to for, you know, ask you, the first question is, what about Kaizen, what about continual improvement really appeals to you at an individual level as a, as a, as Madhur, as a human being, even before we come to talk about business, what appeals to you about Kaizen? Yeah. Uh, thanks Jen for the wonderful introduction. Uh, that was really nice. Uh, I still remember our first meeting, uh, uh, you know, where we met and the perception you gave us about managing certain things, especially uh, operations part of the business mm -hmm. was completely different than uh, what other consultants would tell us. So previously we had few con uh, consultants, you know, who would talk about what kind of tooling you should use, what kind of automation you should do, what kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, HR you should have. But... Mm -hmm. I think since we started working with Kaizen, we have learned how to develop the culture. Okay. So culture of the organization is very important and that you cannot just buy out of the market like you buy any robo for your automation or automating the process and stuff like that. So continuous improvement, not only in your processes, not only your uh, information flow, cash flow or uh, product flow, the continuous yeah. improvement of the culture is, uh, I think, believe, I personally believe that is a very important part of this uh, drive. Fantastic. Very well said, sir. Thank you so much. And, um, you know, I was just, uh, you hit the uh, nail on the head. Uh, just uh, last morning, I was talking to uh, uh, some seniors from a petroleum company, and I told them that uh, when you visit an organization, for example, like Toyota, Maybe you can take a camera and take a few pictures of their 5S and, you know, layouts, but there is no way you can capture the culture on your camera, right? It has to be built. It has to be experienced. So thank you very much. So please do share a little bit about your uh, journey, operational excellence journey. You said you remember our first, I remember too, our first meeting at uh, one of those five-star hotels early in the morning when you brought in the entire senior management leadership and we talked about why operational excellence. That was the real you know, starting point. How has been the journey uh, since then? It's about two years now. Yeah, so it's, I think almost two and a half years. Uh, I think mm -hmm. lockdown uh, ate away uh, almost it's last year. Months. We are in 2023. And what I have seen is uh, year one, it took the whole team to digest. There is something like this. And, uh, you know, these guys can talk about right from uh, operations manufacturing up to the strategies of the business, how to how to have a vision, how, what what mission we should have, how we should drive it, how to reach that vision and mission up to the very last person in the organization 
so everyone's contribution is going towards your uh, bigger vision of the company so first year was you know getting everyone on the same page we are nine plants over here we are more than 1100 people working in this place so uh-huh. it was really uh, time consuming for us to reach to the every uh, person in the organization year two everyone was knowing the terminology they knew the language they knew what is the five s what are those five s stands for what is am what is pm what yeah. is full smed what is tpt all these projects we drive in year two people were like really accustomed and a lot of guys would say that you know this is what we wanted and we should have done this long back <laughs> yeah another by product of this uh, sprint uh, especially in year 2 is that lot of hidden talent came out of uh, my ah, team a so lot of uh, young people who were just sitting there and waiting for that right day to come in their life where they'll get promoted or you know their real potential would come out so i think during this drive i could see a lot of new leaders has been developed so i believe average age of my plant in charge today is less than 30 wow so i believe kaizen gave us that uh, you know really young and dynamic leaders are driving our plants they 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 have all the required soft skills they have risk taking appetite uh, they are on the toes they want to do something on their own they want to show to the world just like me that they are worthwhile to spend you know all this training and uh, investment on that fantastic very well said madhur and uh, i think uh, you uh, bought out um, something very interesting and that is how hidden talent gets um, when given an opportunity it's like yeah. blossoming of you know a, a flower and so very nicely pointed out uh, because when people are given responsibilities and given opportunities they can really you know perform and and and, uh, and i totally agree in, in a journey like this you not only find some fantastic unpolished diamonds you know or hidden diamonds you also find uh, some people who talk lot and do nothing you know so you also yeah. find <laughs> yeah, it's like a samudra manthan you know all the goods and bads would come out but that is very important for human evolution so if you True. want to evolve the organization you have to go through this process correct and as you know um, you know there is uh, two elements of this journey of uh, excellence one is of course making the improvements identifying what you want to improve and making those improvements on the flip side is what we call as daily work management because what you do daily and what you sustain daily is a very important uh, you know requirement for uh, because you if you win daily you win weekly and you win monthly right so what has been your experience with daily work management how has that contributed to the culture building uh honestly uh, we are still working on that part because as i told you we have nine plants and we have uh, initiated all these projects dwm and everything in all the plants so i see some of the plants have really took off really well but uh-huh. some of the plants we still need to you know train them more push them more so that they do this on daily basis so yeah. definitely i have seen a good improvement in terms of our inventory levels in terms of quality in terms of leadership in terms yeah. of productivity when they meet yeah. daily they discuss their yeah. problems daily they come out with solutions daily so a lot of work delegation is also happening at the stage and less yeah. and less problems are coming on our, uh, on my table you know yeah but at the same time uh, i believe that uh, some plants or some uh, premises of ours they still need to you know get there and yeah. uh, i think it's a continuous process and the most important thing i would like to mention here is that the top bottom approach is very important Correct. as long as you have someone from the topmost management involved in this drive then and then only it will become successful so it is not only with the consultants or uh, the managers or hr or kaizen coordinator it lies yeah. with the soul of the company the, the the promoters of the company the top management of the company as long as their interest is there as long as they're involved you will see some sort of development on daily basis very well said sir there is uh, nothing more important than top management commitment um, and, and and in your case it's been very visible and i really congratulate you um, for having be the you know for being the torch bearer of this journey and you have stood very strong and uh, and absolutely this is a journey you know uh, if somebody says that this is a program for two or three years you do it and then you know no 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 this is the way of life this has to like yoga has to be a way of life it cannot be for 3 years right the same way 
uh, I think this is very, uh, very important. Okay, so um, you, um, you know, all of us, you know, it's impossible to talk about business today without referring to the elephant in the room, the pandemic, uh, you know, Corona has, of course, caused a lot of disturbance, continues to do it. And I hope the next year we will be able to deal with it better. Uh, because of all the improvements you have been doing, do you, when you reflect, do you think there has, you know, you were a little better prepared as an organization to deal with this uh, COVID situation? Do you think that gave you some edge? Uh, I think this is a very important question because uh, I have attended one of your uh, webinars in this uh, yeah. during the pandemic, and I really like the, the the point of view you gave in that webinar that every organization was hit in the same way. So lockdown right. was for the, everyone. Uh, yeah. uh, the, the, the logistics were disturbed. So 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 this pandemic hit everyone in the same way, but yeah. now. The question is how these players would react to this pandemic. So the response Correct. time, the reaction to this situation will be different for your competitors and for uh, you know uh, other industries. Correct. Personally, what I believe, uh, right after this lockdown, when we had our first uh, workshop uh, yeah. with one of your consultants, yeah. I feel that because we had systems in place, uh -huh. first we would fight it in better way because we had that structure in place. And then we could yeah. step up and, you know, come to that level in very short time. Okay. So we had uh, uh, safety things in place. So we had safety audits, we have fires audits. So we could include those temperature measurements, sanitization, frequently do this, frequently do that. So since we had that structure, we could just plug in all these new uh, norms set by COVID-19 and then we could get there. And then we could get there. So... Uh, not from uh, safety and fires point of view, but up to the productivity level point of view, we could, you know, uh, cope up really well because we had all these things in place. Quick ramp up. The the rebound yeah. was very quick, yeah. very good. So if and in hindsight, um, if you had not probably uh, been on this journey, maybe the suffering would have been a little more, you know, longer or, you know, more I mean, difficult I to. Bringing all these plants at same level, or you know, talking same language, or following same norms, or uh, you know, uh, there would be there would have been a lot of disparity, uh, you know, among because Correct. everyone have their own way of dealing with things. Correct, absolutely. Um, so uh, you know, our Kaizen uh, Spotlight series, which is an interview, which normally about twelve to fifteen minutes, because you know, people have very small patience. The level of patience to listen to something is very. So I will, I will go into my. Probably my last question, I would love to come back to you on a part two, you know, version of this. But, um, you know, uh, you um, are among, I think, from all the opportunities I've had uh, to talk with Kaizen champions uh, across various countries, you are among the, the youngest, uh, you, know, um, you know, people under, under spotlight. And um, as a young uh, emerging business leader in India, I really want you to um, you know, give uh, your views, some um, insights about um, the role of youngsters, you know, in, in building uh, their organizations, you know, and you had to operate under uh, a typical family, you know, you have the seniority, you have the internal equations, you know, the family dynamics, um, you've been able to manage all this. So what you know, as a as a message would be for Indian, especially family-owned youngsters. How does um, you know picking your uh, operational excellence journey? How does this add to your strength as a leader? Can you reflect some of the on some of these things? I mean, uh, I can imagine you know, especially a country like India, where we have a lot of family-owned businesses, and yeah. uh, there are multiple generations: first generation, second generation, third generation, fourth generation coming into the picture. So yeah. every time there is new generation coming into the business, uh, it you know it's bound to have a lot of changes in it because new yeah. guys will come up with new ideas. They want certain things their own way. So we also faced uh, this kind of situation where we wanted a very techno savvy team with us, you know, who operates computer software, SAP, this that, and everything should be automated. But uh, the kind of uh, business we are in and kind of atmosphere we have is it's, it's, it's completely different. But Correct. since uh, I think 2016, I moved back to India and 2017, I started working with Kaizen. I yeah. think the only reason I can handle this director operations position is just because of Kaizen Institute, 
because i still believe even if you are a sachin tendulkar you need a good coach yeah professional help uh, is always required as long as you thrive to grow so yeah. i personally believe that uh, where we started and where we are today the majority and the lion's share would definitely go to kaizen institute to you to uh, tyagi ji and the whole team uh, mr grover obviously yeah. uh, so people will learn eventually right people will figure out their ways the only question mark is time so yeah. we will we will grow we will get there but the question is how fast and so, on the way how much competition you would face and how fast you get there how sustainable your growth is that is most important so yeah. i think since we have started working with kaizen uh we have been focusing on sustainable growth so we don't want to grow very fast and then yeah. come down and then again grow so that's a very risky situation to be in we want okay. to grow sustain grow sustain grow sustain and that's that's the way uh, i think we have adopted so as a young leader i would definitely say that people uh, young leaders will get experience they will uh, you know grow their organization they definitely have that dna rna in them uh, they have a risk taking appetite they will do great but if you have a, a shield of uh, professional help with you uh, it then it becomes a calculated risk then right. you have experts who are working from different backgrounds which will like know who will add their experiences to your kitty and uh, whatever you do in uh, uh, coming days will have more chances of success so i believe to the all uh, young and dynamic leaders that uh, you should definitely seek professional help uh, it's not about what is the consultation fees of certain institute or what is the charges or whether it's worth or not but what changes you do throughout the journey how you evolve yourself and your organization i think that is what is the priceless thing is absolutely and madhur one more uh, very important question you see i um, when when um, in family owned businesses um, in india i think it's also in many many other countries um, you know i i am very worried when youngsters come and take positions and they don't go to the gemba they don't want to understand the reality and they want uh, as a right they want the title of a director or whatever uh, you know and they want to operate from a, a very nice uh, say office corner office so you have been on the gemba so how has been your learning and how critical it is to go to the gemba and, and go to the trenches as we say i mean i can't imagine sitting at this uh, chair without going to gemba so after 10th standard i did diploma in mechanical engineering so that was quite a hands on kind of a workshop for me uh, where i learned all these different trades that are being used in manufacturing industry and every summer vacation 3 months i made sure that i go on the gamba and work with the workers and operators unless you walk in their shoes you won't be able to instruct them you won't be able to give them a direction and you won't be able to seek right inputs from them and unless you go on the gamba uh, work with them you won't be able to build a good team and unless you have a good team you cannot walk for longer so you know as they say if you want to walk faster you can walk alone but if you want to walk far you have to have a good team and i think to build a good team it is very important to be attached to the gamba and as you rightly say in the kaizen pledge uh, you know my opinion doesn't matter the only one thing matters is what is the reality of gamba is very well so, said yeah every time we make a good decision uh, on the uh, directors room and if we have any confusion or if we have any uh, you know conflict we always say my opinion doesn't matter what matters is the what is the reality of gamba let's go there tomorrow and then day after tomorrow we come back and make a decision whether we should invest in this new thing or not so fantastic i think, I think uh, yes please I think I think that's that's the most important thing, uh, Gamba. You know, <laughs> that's it. That, that's that's yeah. very inspiring. So I'm going to uh, sign off with that very interesting statement that my opinion is not important. The reality of the Gamba is the most important thing, which is uh, you know so uh, so well articulated by you. So Madhur, thank you very much again for sharing your time and congratulations again. Uh, you are a newly minted dad. and it's a uh, it's the biggest promotion you can get in life and uh, please enjoy uh, this fantastic new journey best wishes to your family and to the newborn and uh, happy new year we'll meet you again uh, in, into the new year probably with an episode 2 thank you sir
थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू